Langmuir Blodgett trough or the LV trough is an indispensable experimental tool in surface sciences. It is used for studying the behavior of monolayer of molecules at air water interface and measure fundamental properties like how much area a molecule occupies or what is the thickness of one molecule. It is also used to transfer those monolayers to a solid surface for building well-defined molecular architectures for many applications, most importantly in electronics. Before we get into the details of the technique, let's first try to understand what a monolayer is. Simply put, a monolayer of a substance is a well-oriented one molecule thick layer of that substance at a solid liquid or liquid gas interface. We must keep in mind that the behavior of matter is very different at the interfaces as compared to the bulk of the matter because of the forces that are unique to the interfacial region. The history of making monolayer films at the water surface is as ancient as humanity itself. Evidence of making oil films on water surface have been found from Babylonian clay tablets dating back to King Hammurabi's period in 18th century BCE. However, it was not quite a scientific pursuit back then. Those patterns on oil films were actually used for fortune telling. About a thousand years later, Greeks adopted this practice of fortune telling and they named it lekanomancy, which literally means divination by examining a liquid in a bowl. A practical application of oily monolayers on water was probably first developed by ancient mariners. They had found that when oil was poured onto stormy waters, the waves come down. However, like many things in the ancient world, the calming property was attributed to the holiness of oil rather than to the oiliness of oil. The earliest technical application of organic monolayer films is believed to be the Japanese painting art form called suminagashi. In this technique, a dye composed of a suspension of tiny carbon particles and protein molecules is first spread onto the surface of water. Then a gelatin solution is applied and the dye film is transformed into a set of beautiful patterns. These distinctive patterns can then be transferred by lowering a piece of paper and then the, it, it, it leaves a permanent impression on that paper. The whole process is actually very aesthetic and pleasing to watch. The first attempt to study oil monolayers on water in a scientific manner was done by the great American statesman and polymath, Benjamin Franklin. In the 18th century, Benjamin Franklin was doing quite a bit of experimenting on spreading oil on water surface and observing how they calm down the waves, much like what the ancient mariners used to do. In the 19th century, the great British scientist, Lord Rayleigh, was studying oil monolayers as well, and he was thinking seriously whether this could be a way to measure the thickness of single oil molecules. Now keep in mind that this was still 19th century and scientists at that time were not even convinced about the existence of molecules. One fine winter morning in 1892, Lord Rayleigh received a letter from some Agnes Pockels living in Brunswick, Germany. And this letter had the answer that he was looking for. Miss Agnes Pockels happened to be a housewife and an amateur scientist. She built her own experimental setup in her kitchen and had been working with it for over 10 years on uh, monolayers formed at water surface. She built her setup from what we will now describe as DIY materials. For example, she cleverly used a button for measuring surface forces. Lord Rayleigh was so impressed by her creativity and scientific rigor that he generously communicated the results to the Nature Journal and Miss Buckle's results were published during the 1890s. This is a graph that was published in one of the papers. And now we call this graph as a pressure area isotherm. Next to it is an illustration of the setup that was developed by Ms. Pockles. What's interesting is that the data that was obtained by Ms. Pockles is surprisingly close to what was later obtained with modern instruments. 
Let's do a bit of math now to walk through one of Ms. Pockel's experiments where we want to measure the thickness of a single layer of oil molecules formed at the air-water interface. You can see that it is actually quite simple arithmetic. What's amazing here is that we can readily calculate the thickness of one molecule thick film from such simple experimental setup and calculations. The field of molecular monolayers really took off with the pioneering contribution of Irving Langmuir, who is regarded as the father of surface chemistry. He was joined by Catherine Blodgett, who happened to be the first female PhD from the Cavendish Laboratory at the University of Cambridge. Together, they spent over two decades at the General Electric Company, optimizing and standardizing the technique that will later be named after them. A modern language logic trough that we can buy from some commercial manufacturers looks something like this. However, the basic design is still quite similar to the original one developed by Ms. Pockles. I will tell you next how this method can be used for someone working at the interface of chemistry and biology. In chemistry and biology, we study cells a lot and all cells are bound by and internally compartmentalized by barriers known as lipid membranes. Lipid membranes are composed of a unique class of molecules called phospholipids. Phospholipids have a very peculiar architecture. They have a polar head group and a set of non-polar tails. And if you have taken one of the lipid nanoparticle vaccines, like the ones from uh, Pfizer or Moderna, then let me tell you that phospholipids are important components of those as well. If we want to understand the behavior of phospholipids in biological membranes, or if we want to design better drug delivery systems like lipid nanoparticles, we need to study the fundamental properties of phospholipids. Now, Langmuir trough is a great way to study uh, certain properties of phospholipids, like how much area one phospholipid molecule occupy. So this is where this technique is going to be very handy, and we're going to see how we can do an actual measurement. 